My dear friends in Christ, in today's gospel, which is taken from the discourse of our Lord to the apostles at the Last Supper, our Lord mentions the coming of the Holy Ghost. And he notes that they are sad because he is soon to depart from them. He's been speaking about the fact that he would be taken away. Last Sunday, the words of our Lord, a little while and you shall not see me. And again, a little while and you shall see me. And I go to the Father. And so today is a continuation of that idea. Our Lord says, sadness has filled your hearts because I am going. But if I do not go, then the paraclete will not come to you. The paraclete, of course, the Holy Ghost. And our Lord goes on to say, but if I go, I will send him to you. And we know how important was the coming of the Holy Ghost upon the apostles. We are now three weeks away from that great feast, Pentecost Sunday, when we call to mind the coming of the Holy Ghost upon the apostles and how they were completely transformed. And they went forth fearlessly to spread the faith, no longer afraid of being put to death or afraid of persecution. And this change was worked in them by the Holy Ghost. We say that the Holy Ghost is the soul of the church. And it is the Holy Ghost who works in souls to sanctify them. We call the Holy Ghost the sanctifier, the hidden guest of the soul. We say that through baptism, our souls become temples of the Holy Ghost, that he dwells within us. And again, it is the Holy Ghost through his grace that sanctifies us, enables us to become more Christ-like. And you know, speaking of this idea of the sanctification of the soul, let us reflect for a few moments on the saints. The saints of the history of the Catholic Church are our greatest glory, our pride, our models, our heroes. We like to read the lives of the saints. So many saints who overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil, sanctified themselves and were known for their holiness and eventually declared by Holy Mother Church to be in heaven. And as I said, it's always interesting to read the lives of the saints. It reminds me of a little story about St. John Marie Vianney. You know that St. John Vianney was this saintly curé or pastor in the little village of ours in southern France. And when he first went there, there were not very many people who were going to Mass. And over time, through his penance and prayer and preaching, he brought about a complete reform of his parish. And often in his sermons, he would put little anecdotes that he had read from the lives of the saints because he loved to read about the saints. And one day, there were a couple women in his parish who were so uh, inspired by his life and his obvious holiness, they wanted to dine with him. They thought that would be a great privilege and just to be able to hear more from his lips of the way to God, the way to serve God. And so they asked him that, and he said, yes, come to my rectory. We will have dinner. So they came on the day appointed. And what was their surprise when he set on the table a bowl with bread, crusty bread, hard bread, old stale bread, and a pitcher of water and glasses and plates and the lives of the saints. And he said, here we have everything we need, food for the body and food for the soul. Needless to say, they were very edified at his abstemiousness and his obvious sanctity, but they didn't ask again to have dinner with him. But the point here is that the lives of the saints really are food for the soul because the saints were human beings like us, men and women of flesh and blood and of a fallen human nature, but they overcame it with God's help. So strive to learn more about the saints. You know, there's some books that have a a saint for the day, the story of the saint that is honored primarily on that day. And that's a good thing to read, the life of the saint of the day. 
But I would like to spend a little bit of time speaking about one saint in particular, because we just had his feast day yesterday, and he truly is a saint for us in our times. And that is St. Louis Marie de Montfort. He was from France, lived in Western France, nor Northwestern France in um, the 1700s, born in late 1600s. He was ordained a priest in the year 1700, and he died at a relatively young age, 43, in 1716. But in those 16 years of priesthood, he accomplished an incredible amount of work. He would travel around and give missions, and this was when he was first ordained, he wasn't a regular parish priest. He wasn't quite sure what God wanted him to do, and he was a chaplain in a hospital. But he decided to seek to know God's will from the Pope himself. So he journeyed by foot to Rome, and the Pope told him to go back to France and be a missionary. He called him a missionary apostolic, meaning sent by the Pope himself to preach in the parishes as long as he had permission from the bishop of the diocese. And what is so incredible amount about his work of giving parish missions and bringing about a transformation in the lives of the people of these parishes, what is so incredible is that it was said that you could still see 100 years later in the parishes that he had given a mission, you could still see the effect a century later. Because those people taught their children who grew up and got married and raised a family and taught their children and so forth. And it was passed down generation to generation. The sanctity, the love of Jesus and Mary that he had. And he wrote a number of books, but three in particular that are perhaps best well known. One is called The Secret of the Rosary. An easy book to read because it's not very thick, very lengthy. And it also has stories about the rosary. It's a beautiful book on the rosary. And then, of course, his masterpiece, The True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, where he talks about consecrating ourselves to our Blessed Mother and to Jesus through Mary by a total consecration. And in this book, he explains that, what he means by that. And it's a, a very important devotion, one that we recommend to those who are interested to read about and then make the preparation for this consecration. And another book he wrote, there, there are others as well, but another that I would like to mention is really a, a booklet, a small booklet, maybe 20 pages. I don't know the exact length. But it is called A Letter to the Friends of the Cross. And what happened is, there was one parish where the priest invited him to come and give a mission. Everything was lined up, everything was set. But when he traveled to that area, his enemies, the Jansenists, had gotten to the bishop and spread their lies about him and alarmed the bishop to the point that he forbade him to preach in his diocese. So what was he going to do? He had already traveled there, so he decided, I'll make a retreat. And he went into a retreat. And in that retreat, he decided to write to the people of that parish where he was going to preach and the people of the diocese. He was forbidden to preach, but he wasn't forbidden to write to them. So he wrote what he called a letter to the friends of the cross. Because if we are followers of Christ, then we are friends of the cross. Because our Lord said, if you will be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And of course, our Lord himself showed us the way. And we must imitate him by renouncing the spirit of this world, carrying our crosses, accepting the trials, the sufferings, the contradictions that come our way, realizing that's a good opportunity to do penance in this world, and also imitating, as I said, the lives of the saints. St. Louis Marie de Montfort was one who seemed to have an incredible insight into the value of carrying the cross. In other words, suffering for the love of God. In fact, there was one mission he had 
where, like I said, he had these enemies, the Jansenists, who were trying to undermine his work. And on one occasion, he was going to give a mission in the church, and he was right before he could start the mission, the pastor came out. Now, the pastor was all in favor of this, but then the enemies of St. Louis got to him and told him all these stories, etc. And he came out and he said to the people, I recommend that you just leave and go home. I gave this priest, Father de Montfort, permission to preach to you, and I regret that I gave him permission, but since I did, I'm not going to withdraw that permission, but I think you're wasting your time. And then he walked out of the church. Can you imagine here the pastor after saying that? What did St. Louis do? He knelt down and prayed the Te Deum, the prayer, official church prayer of thanksgiving for this cross, this humiliation that had been given to him. And then he got, got up in the pulpit and gave the mission. Well, the people didn't go home. They stayed. And he had the greatest success at that mission of any mission he had ever given because it was preceded by the cross. And so you see, when we have something to suffer, it is really a gift that God gives us to allow us to share his cross, his suffering endured for us. So this is something you see in the life of St. Louis de Montfort. If you ever get the opportunity to read that booklet, The Friends of the Cross, it doesn't take very long to read, but it points out the value of bearing the cross, following our Lord on his path to Calvary, which is really, for us, the path to salvation. So let us reflect on the saints, learn about the saints. St. Louis Marie de Montfort, a wonderful saint, as I mentioned, for our times, but really all the saints. It is inspiring, something that we should reflect upon. They were given the great graces they were, St. Teresa, the patron of your parish here, that should inspire us to want to honor them, pray to them, and also to strive to imitate their virtues. And all of this, all of these saints, sanctified themselves because of the grace of God, and it was the work of the Holy Ghost in their souls. What a great blessing that we have the Holy Ghost working within us as well. May we be cooperators, cooperating with grace. God's grace will be there. Let us do our part to cooperate with us, with it, to sanctify ourselves and to become like the saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.